Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity again to meet uh, colleagues and friends and thank you for uh, organizing this wonderful conference. Uh, and okay, this opened. Uh, and I would also like to thank Florina for the introduction to my talk. Uh, the order is perfect. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, uh, some ways that uh, we think may help us in early diagnosis of autism, uh, either in the perinatal uh, time or in the pre even prenatally. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the incidents, you already discussed that. I'll talk a bit about the early phenotype of autism, uh, early signs, and uh, uh, a little bit about uh, some assumptions of causation. Uh, so in terms of the phenotype, uh, we all know that uh, there are developmental trajectories for typical children uh, and also different developmental trajectories for uh, children that uh, have different developmental disabilities, including autism. Uh, the most severe uh, due to a severe perinatal insult or severe chromosomal abnormalities, we don't see any advances. Uh, and usually the morbidity is also high. Uh, we can see a uh, developmental trajectory of uh, slow progression uh, or uh, regression in some degenerative di disorders, insult, and uh, in some subtypes of autism, including Red syndrome. Uh, and we can see very uh, different curves, as multiple as they are children with developmental disabilities of different um, delays uh, that might be either closer or uh, far uh, from the normal and typical uh, curve. Uh, and sometimes they would uh, approach the typical cur curve and sometimes they would go uh, further away. Uh, and uh, all those children may, may be uh, May, may have had uh, perinatal insults, a global developmental delay, uh, eventually uh, intellectual disability. If they, get, they don't get closer to the typical curve, um, they may have static encephalopathy. Many of the genetic abnormalities would behave like that and many other uh, syndromes. Uh, but what I would like to um, I think, uh, let you think about it because I'm not going to discuss it, is how can we get those curves closer to the uh, typical development. There are many uh, ways and some of the talks are in parallel uh, with uh, this lecture hall. Uh, and uh, what I would like to emphasize that we would like to zoom in now to a, an earlier uh, phase and to try to look uh, at the manifestations uh, in uh, uh, children uh, at the very early age. Uh, when those curves start to disperse and uh, be different. Uh, and we know then when we look uh, at uh, babies in the perinatal uh, development, uh, babies uh, start with some milestones from the beginning. From the day that they're born, they have some flexor tone, uh, they have eye contact to begin with, uh, they can mimic expressions, uh, they, uh, their movements are uh, synchronized uh, and they're very symmetrical and not always at the same time, but they will do the same thing with uh, both four limbs. Uh, they have some degree of head control. Uh, they are interested uh, in uh, people more than objects, but uh, those faces should be closed because they're uh, vision, they can see, they focus at uh, 20 centimeters when they're born, so if you make eye contact, you have to be close to the baby, uh, and uh, if you say uh, the same distance would show an object, uh, the preference should be to the face and not to the object. Uh, and uh, very fast babies, in uh, just a few weeks, they have increased motor control, and they also uh, uh, have more and more social engagement. Uh, so how, uh, what can we see in uh, infants uh, that eventually were uh, evolved to a diagnosis of autism? Uh, so uh, uh, very frequently we see very minor delays early on. Uh, somewhat lower tone, uh, 
somewhat delayed eye contact, uh, delayed social uh, smile. Uh, the general movements are not as synchronized. Uh, you still can see some cramping of the general movements. Uh, it's a bit more head leg uh, that is related to the low muscle tone. Uh, more asymmetry, there is a very nice Italian study uh, looking at videos of babies and showing that the positioning of the head is not really in the middle most of the time. Always they kind of tend to one side in a cord that eventually evolved to autism. Uh, and they would show uh, interest in objects more than interest in faces. Uh, this concept of being able to recognize those signs very early on uh, is not new at all. Uh, Leo Kanner described it in uh, his initial uh, description uh, that there is a group of children that would uh, show a form that he called it infantile autism. When you uh, read the description, those are very severe forms of autism. Uh, I think at least two of the cases that he described are of Rett syndrome, if we can uh, uh, point to some uh, features in his description. Uh, but definitely uh, it, rec it has been recognized for many, many years that we can see those signs very early. Uh, and the signs that we definitely uh, can see, and there are all the sibling studies that describe those signs, we can see no eye contact, uh, the child that doesn't smile in his voice to smile, uh, doesn't respond to hear her uh, name to a familiar voice. Uh, the, uh, the children are, uh, the babies are more quiet relatively and don't make noises to get our attention. Uh, and eventually they le use less uh, gestures, uh, they don't follow, don't imitate and many other things as uh, the social interaction uh, is uh, lower at an um, at a higher age, uh, around one year. Uh, but uh, I want to caution that all of those signs has a, have a differential diagnosis. A child that doesn't make eye contact, we first have to know what's his vision like. Maybe he, uh, he has some delayed visual maturation. Uh, hearing impairment can influence uh, the response to voices. The motor impairment can uh, influence the gestures. Uh, sensory issues, language delay, and the general term uh, of global developmental delay is a big differential diagnosis for all those uh, early signs, uh, especially since it can be also comorbidity. Autism can uh, be seen uh, very frequently with uh, early on global developmental delay. Uh, we tried uh, to look at uh, those factors in the perinatal uh, time when the child is born uh, and also uh, to try to figure out whether we can see some of those signs uh, even earlier because we see some of those signs in preemies that is, they're similar to fetuses at uh, 32 or 34 weeks but they're we can see them and we can examine them uh, and to try to learn what can be those signs and what, what, what signs are more valid that we can use uh, for a diagnosis. Uh, we know uh, that, uh, and it was published also from uh, here, uh, from uh, this group at Ben Gurion, uh, that uh, complicated and delayed deliveries uh, and um, use of general anesthesia because of complicated deliveries, uh, use of uh, pitocin, uh, all of those are uh, associated with a higher risk for autism. Uh, prenatal viral infection uh, are, is associated with an increased risk. Uh, fetal exposure to stress or, of course, to infections. Uh, elevated risk in hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy. Uh, and what I'm going to discuss uh, a bit more, elevated risk uh, in prematurity. Uh, so in a court, and I'll uh, present only the conclusion, uh, in a large court uh, of uh, babies from our prematurity clinic, uh, we see what was already shown, uh, that there, there is an increased risk of uh, uh, autism in all the court, and this risk correlates uh, with the earlier that the baby uh, is born. Uh, however, 
uh, we did see uh, this linear correlation uh, of week of birth and ASD, uh, but we noticed that it was different in boys uh, than in girls uh, in our court. Uh, so definitely uh, we prove again, uh, which was uh, uh, proven in some of the papers, some other papers didn't show that, that there is a uh, that prematurity is, an incre uh, is a significant risk factor for autism uh, and uh, it's much more sig significant uh, with very early uh, prematurity uh, than with later prematurity. Uh, however, uh, the degree of prematurity influences more the females uh, and uh, the males, uh, they have increased risk throughout the pregnancy. Uh, uh, throughout uh, the, the different weeks. Uh, regardless of the week of pregnancy, males are at increased risk of autism, uh, which proves like a second hit uh, kind of uh, assumption uh, that uh, the risk in males uh, is elevated uh, and uh, the week of pregnancy uh, influences mainly uh, females which don't have this additional genetic uh, risk. Uh, of course, as a clinician, I have to say that we really have to be aware in the signs and symptoms of uh, uh, autism in premature babies uh, and uh, to not, not to be led, misled by calculating the uh, week of uh, and doing the, what is called the correction of prematurity uh, and uh, to pay attention to those signs and not uh, to find this excuse that because they're premature, they're so much delayed in the, all their milestones. Uh, some other hints that we found in this uh, perinatal uh, time that the baby is born, we found some differences uh, in the ABR, in the BERA exam, uh, of the, uh, that uh, point to some uh, abnormalities uh, in the area of the brainstem. Uh, and uh, statistically, the group with uh, autism was uh, different than, uh, in uh, uh, those brain uh, in the of he hearing waves than the group uh, of controls. Uh, and we also, we didn't publish it yet, uh, we have a court also of high risk uh, siblings uh, and we found sig significant early empathic uh, uh, abilities that uh, when we examined those babies at six months, uh, as compared to uh, siblings that did not develop eventually autism. Uh, another hint that it's very easy to receive uh, are from the parents. Uh, parents are very uh, attentive and responsive to their baby, uh, and even if the, the baby is the first baby, they have those instincts and they're able to report us uh, that they have concerns. Not, not always the uh, concerns will be accurate, but the fact that a parent is worried about this baby, uh, it should be enough for us to examine more in depth and to look uh, for signs of, for ASD. Uh, it was shown and we see, uh, we see it also in our high risk clinic that more than 50% of the parents uh, have concerns in children who eventually would have autism uh, before age of one year. Uh, many of the concerns uh, relate to delay la delayed language and vocalizations, but also they have more specific concerns that can really direct us in the direction of autism if we listen to those parents. But we want to go earlier, uh, and we have very easy tools. Uh, in Israel, it's very common to get at least three ultrasounds during the pregnancy, uh, many of the women would even get a fetal MRI. Uh, and w not only that we can measure different things by uh, the ultrasound and by the MRI, uh, we also can see uh, uh, fetal behavior in uterus. Uh, I will show it uh, by MRI because it's hard to show an ultrasound and to recognize all the parts, uh, but we really can see uh, the baby, uh, the fetus uh, moving and uh, uh, we can look at uh, symmetry, asymmetry, the head, leg, many of the things that we examine uh, we can see by uh, this technology uh, and there is even um, a score that we can score fetal behavior uh, by uh, ultrasound, by movements, by the times that the 
uh, uh, infant is reach, the fetus is reaching for his mouth and some other measures of behavior. Uh, uh, some uh, additional early uh, signs, uh, we looked at the size of the ventricles. We have many uh, uh, women that are coming for examination because some asymmetry in, and some mild uh, ventriculomegaly, the size of the brain ventricles. Uh, when, and uh, we didn't have a very large core, so we found uh, mainly an association with ADHD, but there was a hint there that also there is an association with increased uh, ASD in this uh, court. Uh, we also have the genetic risk that we heard about. Uh, there is a, an elevated risk in a sibling. Uh, there is a higher risk in fragile X premutation carrier, and we have the national screening for fragile X in uh, Israel. Uh, and now uh, for the current procedure of amniocentesis is sending from a, for a microarray. Uh, and in addition, some uh, women would also add uh, whole exome sequencing uh, in the sample of the amniocentesis, so we may find some of the mutations that are highly uh, pathogenic and can provide us an additional hint for uh, risk. Uh, and uh, the last uh, study that I will discuss uh, is the elevated androgenic hormones that we can find in amniotic fluid. And as you heard from uh, Florina, uh, they may be a hint for us for increased risk for autism. Uh, we're performing, and it's still an ongoing pro uh, project, the prenatal signs uh, study. It's called ARIA study. Uh, we are using a measure called AGD as a measure of uh, risk. Uh, we know that, uh, and we heard about it, that males produce twice as much fetal uh, sex steroids. Uh, that uh, are in charge of masculinizing the brain and exerting epigenetic influences on the, uh, the brain and the organs. Uh, and uh, a proxy that was uh, first described at our, our hospital uh, called anogenital distance uh, can be a marker uh, of hormonal ex exposure. It's a non-invasive marker that ca can be measured very accurately uh, by ultrasound in the fetus. Uh, and this can show us whether there are some uh, abnormal hormonal influences uh, bo uh, both on girls and boys uh, in the uterus. Now, we now just finished this week uh, to accumulate a cohort of 500 uh, pregnancies where we got all those measurements and many other measurements like uh, uh, head size and vet ventricular size. Uh, we are accumulating the data on parental concerns and uh, eventually uh, QChat and CDI at uh, 18 months. Uh, and we're examining those babies and hopefully in the uh, two next conferences in two years I may be able to present uh, the final data because we need a two-year follow-up to finish all, uh, to follow all these uh, cohorts. Uh, the, the PI on this study is Professor si uh, Simon Baron Cohen uh, and uh, is performed in collaboration with uh, Cambridge. Uh, so uh, I will not get into all the links uh, that would uh, cause uh, this uh, uh, sequence uh, of uh, events uh, because uh, Gal is uh, showing the <laughs> one minute. Uh, and uh, uh, I will just uh, want to summarize uh, by saying that there are many things that would influence the brain development uh, in the uterus and uh, after the birth. Uh, and uh, I believe that, and uh, it's kind of well known, that uh, those circuits that are influencing communication are very vulnerable, so many, many things can influence the development. Uh, there is a lot of adaptation in the brain. We can see adaptation even uh, in a stroke in an adult. So, of course, there is a lot of plasticity in the fetus, in the premature baby. Uh, however, uh, this adaptation and these uh, repairs that are uh, happening with those uh, circuits, uh, many times may can, they may bring to abnormal connectivity and uh, link to autism. And I cannot finish a talk uh, talking about early signs uh, 
uh, without talking about intervention. The whole reason uh, of trying to find those early signs is to try to influence those trajectories that I showed up front. Uh, we don't do it just uh, to make the parents sad and to tell them uh, a diagnosis early on. We want uh, those children uh, to get more and more interventions. Uh, we have this uh, wonderful network in Israel of Tipot Chalav, of early screening uh, of babies, and they can recognize those very early gaps in development and help us promote intervention and aim for better function. Uh, but uh, I have to caution uh, that uh, occasionally those uh, gaps are more obvious in the more severe babies. Uh, so not all, uh, always the fact that we're providing the early intervention in the babies that we uh, saw very early uh, will get a better prognosis because those babies uh, came to us because they're more severe up front. We do change function, but not always we can uh, correct as much as in a baby that uh, the gaps are not uh, as large. Uh, and I want to thank uh, our very small uh, research team. Uh, the real studies, as I said, are in collaboration uh, with uh, Cambridge uh, and our OBGYN uh, department. Uh, and of course, to all the, our center, everybody is involved in all the studies, even if their names are not listed as being as part of the research team. And uh, thank you all. Thank you.